So a couple years ago, I did a little bit of an unconventional video. I compared one of Dyson's first handheld vacuums to a DeWalt cordless shop vac. And while that seemed like maybe not the best comparison, the reason I compared it was because I ended up liking the DeWalt cordless shop vac more than that Dyson handheld. And so for the last three, four years, this has been the main vacuum in our house when we need to do quick pickups. So recently though, I broke our 15 year old uh, Dyson animal corded vacuum. It unclipped, I dropped it, it fell on stuff, shattered, that was it. And so as I started researching getting a replacement for it, it was good timing, it was Cyber Monday, and I was able to get the new Dyson V11 for $4.99. And yes, that is expensive, and there's other options on the market, but $4.99 is what I paid for the animal that I broke in the first place on here. So one of the things that made me go for it is at some point here, we're gonna be putting in uh, laminate flooring, and so we're not gonna have as much carpet anymore. So I figured, okay, we don't need as good of a vacuum as a corded anymore. However, when I brought this home and started using it, especially with this torque sense, this torque drive head that has a sensor for whether you're on carpet or hardwood, what we couldn't believe was the fact that this on auto was going through and picking up buckets of dirt that our old vacuum was leaving behind. Our main floor vacuum was a Dyson DC33, and we thought that was a great vacuum. This was better, didn't see that coming. So it's like, wow, we are now at a point where cordless vacuums are better than handheld versions, at least in my opinion. But then I started kind of looking at this more. It's like, okay, has a crevice tool. This has a crevice tool. And I was wondering, can I really compare the V11 against this DeWalt cordless? And then I happened to be on Best Buy's website and Dyson advertises their V7 as an auto and boat package for 229. And inside that package is some attachments, a flexible hose like this has. But what caught my eye was this, and I got this one with mine. This is a portable head that has a little 30 watt motor in here that cleans. This doesn't have anything like that. So I'm like, well, that's kind of interesting. So up to this point, I've always used this to clean the cars. Maybe I should use this now. Okay, but what's the power like? This has three modes, low, medium, and high. This only has one on, and the, when this is on, it's rated at 31 CFM. This one on medium is 36 CFM. And furthermore, the HEPA filters in both of these are both rated to 0.3 microns. All of a sudden, I kind of felt like, hey, this isn't quite as apples and oranges as I thought it was. And so what I thought I wanted to do today was see, okay, forget the house. We know this is gonna clean the house better. But if I wanna go out to the car and clean the car, should I quit taking this one or should I start taking this one? And so what I wanna do is go out to my wife's van and clean it first with this. Now I gotta give a little bit of caution here. If you look around, my wife keeps her house pretty clean. However, her van, completely different story. If you ever saw that episode of Friends where Chandler breaks into Monica's closet, that's what we're talking about here. Oh my God. <laughs> You're messy. So what we gotta do is we gotta go outside, we gotta first just pick up a couple bags of trash out of the van, and then we're gonna go through and clean it with this the best we can. Then I wanna come through on medium and clean it with this. And the main difference will be not the power, but how much of a difference does having this head make and going through and cleaning it up? Then when we're done with that, I really wanna kick it up. I really wanna see what this V11 is capable of. On high, which they call boost, this thing pulls 59 CFM. It is almost double the CFM on this. This is amazing. This thing is so powerful with, with its digital brushless motor. So we'll go through afterwards and we're gonna run it both with this head and we're gonna use this torque drive head. Reason being, a little more powerful, a motor, the way it'll brush, and it keeps a tighter seal so it's gonna pull more air through. Yes, this may seem a little silly, but I got them. Why not? And the van's dirty. Okay, so we're gonna head outside, go get the van clean. Before we do that, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Okay, here's the vehicle in question. So, first task is gonna be to grab a trash bag and get everything out of here that isn't vacuumable. Looks like we got some Black Friday ads and whatnot, so let me uh, get this all cleared out and then we'll get the DeWalt. 
Okay, that took a little longer than I thought, but this gives you an idea of what we'll be vacuuming. Just gonna use a mix of the standard hose and the crevice tool. The battery has been fully topped off, and while I'm running it, I'm gonna have the cell phone going with the stopwatch so that we can see how long the battery works because there really isn't necessarily an advertised battery runtime because it depends on the life of your battery and how big a one you're using. So this is a five amp hour battery, probably about three years old. So the one thing left to do before we start this is to clean the air filter so it has maximum suction. So we'll go clean this out and let's get this filter clean too. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is kind of poetic justice here. The, one of the kids makes the biggest messes uh, is back here helping clean. So once he goes through it, I'll come through, and then we'll keep the timers going through the whole way. Faster, work faster. Hey, we're at the 19 minute mark, and I've noticed quite a bit of loss of power. We're showing one bar, but 19 minutes is pretty respectable. However, I have a second one. And I know I have a cord, but we're gonna keep this test in the spirit of being cordless. Now, if I were to go put that back on the charger, it'd be charged in one hour. So now we'll just keep going. We're getting close. So we're gonna finish this out on battery power. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna call it good with the DeWalt. I can keep going over forever and getting a little bit more, but I think this is where your average person would call it good. It's getting what it gets, you know, making a couple passes at a time. I'm gonna go clean the floor mats real quick and we'll swap over to the Dyson. Okay, so now we're switching over to the V11. We're gonna run it on medium. And again, what makes this difference different is we have a powered uh, motor head. So little motors right down in here that turns it. With 40 minute runtime, that's pretty impressive. One of the things that's generating that additional runtime is this is a digital brushless motor. Uh, the DeWalt motor is not brushless. So long term, if DeWalt were to move to a brushless motor, that would help. So now we're gonna go through, I'm not gonna use a crevice tool, but we're gonna go through the van now and the floor mats and see how much more dirt we get than the DeWalt picked up. You can just hear it. The head does tilt too. Okay, so the biggest difference with this tool and the DeWalt is it only took me 10 minutes uh, to do the same amount of work that we did before. And the carpets, the carpets definitely look better. Okay, so here's what the DeWalt grabbed. Out of wrappers, the big junk, and that filter is definitely Fill back up with some dust. Now as a comparison, here's what the Dyson grabbed. Significantly more dirt. And it's hard to see in there, I'm gonna dump it in a second. Lots of fines, a lot of fine dirt. So let's go ahead and dump this into the case. So we're gonna put it right in the middle. So you can see in there, um, the Dyson definitely grabbed a significant amount more uh, than the DeWalt did. And really what it came down to here was that motorized tool. That motorized tool agitated the carpet and pulled a lot more than we otherwise would have got. Okay, so I just plugged it in and I am showing 75%. So it took 25% battery to make that run. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this back up to 100% 
and we're gonna go ahead and use the high boost mode. Okay, there's a couple things that make the V11 so good. The two straightforward things is it's got a lot of power and a lot of runtime. The other part that makes it so good is this high torque drive. So this is power driven, just like the other head, uh, but there's a lot of technology in this. Uh, cutting to the chase, this has a sensor, so if you're on either hardwood or carpet, the system will actually boost the power to it. And there's rubber padding here, and these little red gates can open and close. So if I open them all the way, more air comes through, makes it easier to push on the floor, but the more air that comes through the front, the less is being pulled through the carpet. For normal household use, with the gates closed on auto, this thing will outdo a lot of uprights. The car tool we used has fixed gates, so some air was coming through. So now what we're doing is we're charging it back up, and we are going to come out and run it on full boost mode with the gates closed. Shouldn't take too long to vacuum it, but we're going to see how much more, if any, we can pull out of that van. Okay, so we've got this turned on to boost. We've got the big head on here with the gates closed. Now I'm not gonna be able to get as much coverage everywhere because of the wide head. It's not gonna lift. So we'll just give this the best shot we got. And we've got about eight minutes of run time. Okay, so if you can see in the container, that is using the indoor head on boost mode. And so that's what we pulled up compared to before. So that's kind of pushing the V11 to its max. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the skinnier car brush real quick because some of the mats like those, that head's too big. So I'm gonna finish up with that. Okay, so in the container, that's the final amount using the V11 with full power with boost, which is more powerful than some uprights. Let's dump it out real quick. So that's how much was in the van that the Dyson didn't pick up on medium. And we saw how much the Dyson picked up on medium that the DeWalt didn't. So that's probably almost as much as the Dyson picked up more in the DeWalt. So by the time you figure in what the Dyson picked up in total that the DeWalt missed, it's actually pretty significant. Now technically, a vacuum can't fix these. These need to be shampooed in the worst way. But, let's compare the before shot to that. And we definitely got the benefit of a clean van, at least for one day. Okay, something else I wanna point out here real quick is this is quiet, this is really quiet. So I'm gonna use my phone real quick here to do a decibel check on it. Got about 74 decibels on here, and while I'm talking right now, we're pulling 80. So either I'm loud, or this thing's really quiet. Okay, so now let's do the same comparison with the DeWalt going, you know, approximately the same distance. Okay, so we're getting about 81 decibels on average, and I'm looking down and talking, I'm getting about the same. There's a big difference though. For every 10 decibels, you're actually doubling the noise volume on here. And so while I consider this to be appropriate and fine for volume, the Dyson's very quiet. Uh, kind of interesting thing, when I did my first video here, a lot of people yelled at me for having this by a baby. Um, but again, for confirmation here, I'm as loud as this is. So if the child suffered from being around a vacuum, that child's been very much suffering for the last three and a half years around me as well. Okay, so after everything all said and done, the Dyson found a lot more dirt than the DeWalt did. It got the carpets deep cleaned as far as you're gonna go without actually using like a Bissell machine or a shampooer. And so now I'm kind of left at this place of, originally when I did my first video, I said, hey, I would pick the DeWalt over the Dyson. And that stood true. So now where are we at today? I didn't have the V7 to compare explicitly, but if I was looking at the same cost 
$200 between doing the Dyson V7 and buying this, I would probably buy the Dyson V7 because of the attachments it comes with. However, that's mainly based on the fact that it would almost be silly to buy this shop vac and batteries if you didn't own any other tools. It would be a very weird scenario to buy this and some batteries and not own a drill, a saw, a work light, something along the line. So if you already own DeWalt batteries, 20 volt system, if you're in that ecosystem, this is a must own. It is still a must own and I'm going to always use it. It's going to follow me around for projects and if I'm picking up something big, things that are kind of maybe a little damp, this is still going to be a go-to machine. But it's not as much of a go-to machine anymore. This has now taken over as kind of our go-to machine. For vacuuming in the house, it's amazing. If I got quick little pickups, the accessories are very easy to click in and out. So this is now for me my go-to pickup machine. We've replaced this. Now granted this was $500. In 2005 when I bought my first Dyson Animal I paid about $500. So 14 years later cordless technology has drastically changed and now it's better than my upright was. So it's pretty impressive. I'm very impressed with this machine but I still love this one. But I'm in DeWalt's 20 volt ecosystem so this makes a lot of sense. When I was out vacuuming today if I have a project where I'm going to be scrubbing for a very, very long time, I have used the cord before. And the reason I do that is as the battery dips in power, this loses power a little bit with it. So if I want to clean as good as I can the whole way through, being plugged in is a better way to go. But most of this vacuum's life has always been cordless. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed the video today. This was kind of fun, an apples and oranges comparison. Something a little different than maybe all the reviews you see out there and hopefully you got something out of it. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, if you guys would like to see a full review of this V11, go and let me know and I'll consider putting something together. But thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. It's kind of fun sometimes to do a comparison like this that you're just not gonna see uh, most channels do. Thanks for watching.